Terry Little, Bear Roots Brewing Company, and this is our brewer story. We've been open for about three years. In fact, September 7th was our three year anniversary as a business open. We started as a homebrew shop and we opened our brewery December 15th, 2015. Uh, since then, we've been making beer every day. When we, when we decided to open the brewery, um, it was not just me and it wasn't a lot of money funded behind the project. So my family, in-laws, friends, everyone had a hand in building this place. Uh, both locations have been built by staff, ownership, and family, and, and good friends. Yeah, so I was a junior executive for a company out of Sonoma Valley. I was there for about nine years, and uh, I got kind of bored being my job. I started home brewing as a hobby at my house. I literally bought a kit online, it showed up. My neighbor and I, Joe Henschel, we brewed a batch together and before it was done fermenting, we had already ordered a kegerator, kegs, taps, more ingredients, all grain systems. So yeah, we got the bug, the very first boil. My name is Vince. I'm the manager downtown tasting room for Bear Roots and Vista. I've been here since it started, since we opened in May. I owned my own business for 28 years. I was a cabinet maker. Terry Little's a good friend of mine, and I used to frequent the place, and I always told him when I retired, I want to come and work for you. And uh, when he opened this place up, he said, come on down. He said, maybe you can work the door. And I'm like, all right. And from working the door, I ended up becoming the manager. My name's Mike, they call me Big Mike. I'm the head brewer over at Bear Roots Brewing Company. Um, actually, I've only been here for about a year now, going over a year. Um, actually, I come from a culinary arts background. I have a culinary arts degree. I've worked at the, the Baltimore Country Club and also at the Marriott Inner Harbor. So I come from a, a straight up culinary background and this is soups and stocks to me. So. So when we started out making beer, it was for myself. So a lot of our beer is higher ABV. I'm a bigger guy. Again, I was making recipes for my family and my friends. I like beer from all levels, ales, Belgian beers, um, lagers, you name it. So Bear Roots is a very diversified uh, portfolio of beer. Um, and it's very approachable. Our IPAs are approachable. Our ales are you know, mild, um, not so malty. So it definitely uh, reaches out to the masses. We pride ourselves at Bear Roots at making very, very drinkable beer. All of our beer. We get people in here who say, well, I'm not much of a beer drinker. So we give them taste. Here, try this, try that. By the time they leave, they're drinking beer. Um, okay, so this is always a weird one for me, right? So you got to think like I'm not a I'm not your typical like brewer guy. I'm not a home brewer. I didn't develop my own recipe. Beer I like to drink, of course, original. I drink of course. Um, but the craft beer thing is such a cool way. It's you know, it's like instead of having a, a hamburger every day, you get a different mix. So it's a, it's a much more um, you know, there's more variety there for me. When I first started, it was more of a brown ale, Scotch ales, uh, Belgian beers. Now that I understood hops and what they can do for the beer. We've definitely gone a little bit more hop heavy. Uh, we have over eight IPAs on tap. And I, we really like uh, the series we do called Hop Tyrant, where we will we'll use different hops per batch and you know, bring out the characteristics of those hops uh, each and every time. Um, actually, that, uh, that Pineapple Express that we have was like my first real experimental beer. Terry just said, hey, make this beer, do what you can, and write it all down. And so we didn't have a hazy on tap at the time. I have really very minimal knowledge of um, hops and hop profiles. 
Um, so I took a gamble on the IBUs and alpha acids and what reviews said and made a beer out of it and actually it turned out to be a really good beer, so. Pineapple-less Express. So yes, there's a Pineapple Express and we've all know that from the movie and then another local brewery made a Pineapple Express beer. Our Pineapple-less has no pineapple in it. We use Vic's Secret Galaxy CTZ and you get this really cool tropical pineapple nose on it and it's again a hazy beer. So we use uh, WLP 008 out of White Labs which is an East Coast Ale. Um, it has a great reaction with the yeast um, and the hops at certain points of fermentation. That beer is just delicious. It's like a fuzzy navel, pineapple explosion, uh, super murky. I love that beer. That's gonna be one of the ones that we can. To clear up any confusion, we have a series called Hop Tyrant Series. That's where we take the same base recipe and we throw different yeast and hops at it. Pineapple's Express was Hop Tyrant number six. So when you look at the can, it'll say Hop Tyrant number six, and then below that, Pineapple's Express. That's because we wanted to keep its roots. So it came from the Hop Tyrant series and we developed the winner, and we're gonna continue to, uh, to go down that Hop Tyrant series and see what else we pull out of our, pull out of our hat. No, I mean, that's awesome, right? You know, you, you do something, you hope it works out, and then when it uh, exceeds expectations, I mean, you, you gotta be stoked, right? It's like, you know, everybody drinks that beer, like, this is a great beer, and in the background, I'm chuckling in my head saying, I made that beer, you know? So it's a, it's a good gig. All of our ingredients come from uh, BSG, which is Brewer Supply Group. That's where all of our base malts come from and 90% of our malts that they carry. I think when you look at a beer recipe, you have to look at it as a framework. So the, the base malt is probably the most important part. So we use RAR, uh, it comes out of Sharpie, Minnesota. Uh, that, I believe, is the, the foundation of our beer. And 90% of our beer has that base malt in it. We might throw some Marisata or, or some pills of malt, but for the most part, we're using our uh, two row as our base malt. I think it comes down to ingredients and then how you use those ingredients and at what time you're putting those ingredients in the batch, which really develops quality beer. For us, we don't buy cheap ingredients because we don't need to. We're only a one barrel brew house. So we can afford to buy a premium ingredient and use it every single time without really you know, hurting our production and trying to keep costs down on high volume. You, if you don't take the time to be thorough on your cooking process, your boiling, your mash, and all that stuff, if you're not paying attention to every little thing that you do, you don't end up with a consistent product. It's really, really important to, to make sure your ingredients are good, clean, fresh, having a sterile system. Um, and then, of course, anybody can tell the difference between an actual fruit compound or a flavor compound. I mean, you can tell, so it, it, it plays a big, a big part. Um, I probably have a little bit more of an experimental palette. I'm more willing to try to pair different things that are a little bit outside the norm. Um, that kind of appeals to me, to add some of that flair. You know, everybody's doing similar beers. It's really nice to try to step outside that and do something different. We get people from the industry who come over here and drink beer on their breaks and we have some great neighbors downtown Vista and they are all blown away that we have a one barrel system and our brewers can keep up with two locations and still pump out the quality beer that we pump out. You know right now it's actually not that bad because for about six months I did it all by myself and that was before we made the modifications we have now so I was the dude that was brewing, cleaning, kegging, milling, you know, all of it. So now, I mean, we got a couple of the people. It's a smooth, for me, it's smooth sailing. It's, it's, it's not that bad. But yeah, a one barrel system, dude, you gotta crank. You gotta crank it out big time. I mean, we're putting out 42 barrels uh, a month. Now we've kind of got it down to a science. I mean, we were probably the most highly effective one barrel brew house in the nation. I would love to see numbers and, uh, you know, how the people are doing it. But we're putting out a huge amount of volume on that, on that little system. We first opened, I think the number one concern was consistency. And that's the last I heard about that. I think our pail is something special. It's not overly malty, yet very crisp. Amarillo Citro, 
balance out so well on the palate. That beer, like I think, if I'm right, is really gonna take off, especially canning. I mean, it's just crushable. It's 5.4%, it's delicious. Um, you just can't say, I mean, that's it. 5.4% and delicious. So Bear Cookie was a beer that was inspired by many other breweries here in San Diego County and probably I'm sure around the nation, which is a chocolate peanut butter stout. You take a stout and you put chocolate peanut butter in it, I mean, it's a win, right? So we did our own spin. My wife wanted me to um, make one at home and I did. And when we opened up at first, we called it We Made One Too. And it was really to poke fun at myself. I mean, I don't take myself so seriously. Like, you know, we're making beer. So, I don't know if that was the right thing to, I don't think I underst people understood my humor. I think they like, thought like, maybe like, oh, we made one too. But it was like, we made one too. You know what I mean? So, we quickly changed it when I heard it was kind of getting some negative feedback. Uh, and so we asked, we went to the only source who could name a beer correctly. And that was my three-year-old at the time. He was nice, almost six, but when he was three, and when I would come down here, I'd work my day job, and then I'd come down, I'd have dinner with the family, and work till two in the morning, you know, digging trenches, literally building this place out with my buddy Nick. Uh, he'd always think that I was going to Bear Cookie. Now mind you, there is the Bear Cookie, and it's famous for itself in San Diego beer, so that name has a true definition of what it belongs to, but back then, Bear Cookie was my son, where I was going to work. And so we just incorporated that name into the, into the beer, and it's funny because we didn't, developed the beer to sit the name, but they both matched up so well that it was like perfect. And I love the fact that my son named our number one selling beer. That's just so cool. Yeah. You know, Bear Roost does not come easy. It was about six months of development with, uh, again, the guy that I was brewing at home with, Joe Henschel. We had talked about opening the brewery together. Um, we're still great friends to this day, but it never, it never panned out. You know, I ended up, my wife and I, doing the journey alone. But he was a big part of the logo originally and coming up with the idea. We wanted to represent what Bear Roots was gonna stand for, which is community and coming from nothing, which is the bear. Um, but that's B-A-R-E, not B-E-A-R. But we also want to represent our home state, California. So we incorporated the bear. And then roots is just stick to your roots. It just really come out to what we were always about. You know, I said something back when we did a Kickstarter video. It's like, you know, know where you're from and know where you're going. And I think to this day, Bear Roots has kept those fundamentals and our culture is really important even though we're a small company. And having roots in the, in the, in the actual name Every time I walk up to the building and I see Bear Roots, I know what I'm walking into. And it reminds me, whether we're as large as stone one day on the West Coast, or we stay small, we know where we came from and we know that because of our logo. Um, we want to create a warm atmosphere where you walked away from the city and you got inside Bear Roots and you were like kind of more in the mountains and you were relaxed. And I feel like when you sit at the bar and you meet the people here and you see the, the, what the wood does in, around you, it really takes you out of the, the grind and you kind of just get to have a beer in, in a nice, comfortable environment. Learning the mistakes from here, the downtown, was what, what and that we built that in 30 days. I mean, we, you know, it was a fast process. Uh, again, it's all lipstick on a pig, um, for a better lack of a, a term. Um, uh, in Dakota, uh, one of the guys I was working with you back then was just stellar in getting that place open and ready to go. So, Bear Roots. The big announcement. So here, right here, this is the exclusive. You get it, um, and this will probably air after our loyalist party this Saturday. So. You guys feeling the burn? Yes! Contestant, and his keys are ready to contest. 
Royalist of the Year plaque. So 2016, the winner of that year was my friend Ryan Simpson. Second year is 2017. That's when I met Sarah and Shane. I couldn't have seen these people here more smiling and thankful for everything we did than Travis and Amanda. I moved here about two years ago, two and a half years ago. And uh, so, soon after that, we found Bear Roots and we instantly found family right away. Every single one of you that we've ever met has instantly become family and we love you all so much. And we have Terry and Paige and the rest of the Bear Roots family to thank for that. Um, I'm here because I am a loyal Sam. I love you. Go to bed! <laughs> And, uh, and then it was my wife. My wife was huge in getting this business. Not only, not only believing in me, you know, but then, but then, but then the amount, the sacrifice that she's made in the last three and a half years is absolutely incredible. I mean, if you really think about it, what a selfish thing to do for, for one person, right? I have this idea, I have this dream, I want to do it, and and a selfless thing for her to say, you know what? I support you. Let's do it. She didn't, she didn't want, she did not want this. Trust me. This is my thing. And, uh, and I can only thank her for allowing us to create what we have created today, because this is truly special. Um, I'm moving to Bend, Oregon. Um, I just landed a job as the Western Director of Sales for BSG, which is Brewer Supply Group. I'm beyond excited for this position. The opportunities it's gonna allow me to see as a brewer. Um, I'm going to Hop Harvest on the 17th of September, and then I'm flying to JBF. These are things I wouldn't have a chance to do being a small business owner. Um, I just hired a general manager to take my place here at um, Bear Roots and we're looking at selling um, a majority of the shares and me kind of exiting out of the day-to-day. -day. Again, it all comes down to people and product and then you have process. We have an amazing product and great people. So a lot of people will say, well Bear Roots will be the same when Terry's not there. I think it'll be better. I think I stifle growth. I think a true leader understands it's not about them and it's about everyone around them. And there's no way today I'd be where we're at without hundreds of people who have helped us get here. So I had an idea in a garage, but that was it. Um, I might have been leading the charge to follow that idea through, but without tremendous support, people's finances, uh, banks, my wife for the last four years. I mean, she's still with me. That's amazing. So I think um, what's next for Bear Roots is nothing but excitement growth potentials and I can't wait to see what this staff does with this company uh, you know and I'm I'm excited to be part of it I think for just being open since May I think we're doing well last Friday night standing room only in here I feel like our downtown location is you know Vista's best kept secret product that you know like anything overdo it it's not a great thing but it, it's an easy way to break down walls and let people talk to each other on a normal, a normal level. So it, for me, it kind of opens that gateway. Beer brings people together. I've seen it firsthand for the last three years. People who would walk by each other on the side of the road and never even say hi are best friends in this place and now hang out with each other and go to barbecues and they know each other's kids. Um, it breaks down so many barriers in society. And we have some rules here when, you know, we don't talk about religion, politics, um, everyone's welcome. And I love the fact that when you're here, you're safe. And it's a place where you can share a beer with someone, unite over that, and I think that's what beer does. That's what beer does, it brings people together. And I always say a pint is so much bigger than just a pint. Um, I witnessed it firsthand, and before I witnessed it, I felt it and saw it myself before making the product. So that beer is way bigger than just a job.